everybody, Nigel here, Nigel's on the bench and i uh, got a new review for you today and this is a kit I've been after for a long long time I just never got round to buying it and the other night I was on Moss's stream uh, Moss6510, I think it was Tuesday night his stream was on and I was trying to buy it off him because he's selling a load of kits to raise money for a new camera and I was trying to buy this off him and he wouldn't sell it but James was there to boldly go model works so I'll put a link to his channel down in the description below down, down there and um and basically, it's a great little channel. He does a lot of 148 um, armor stuff, like the Tamiya tanks and everything, and some lovely little models. He's, he's big on 70 second scale and stuff like that. So go and have a look. He does some great reviews, some great little builds, and they're not like my videos. They're not like, you know, bloody novel. It's just like a little paperback. He's, you know, puts the video together very quickly. So anyway, he sent me this kit. So thank you very much, James. It came beautifully wrapped in lots of bubble wrap and a nice big box and got here all safe. And he sent it special delivery as well, which amazed me. So uh, and he did me an absolutely wonderful price. So thank you very much, James. Much appreciated. So this is the Avroanson Mark 1 in 148 scale from Airfix. And I believe, I haven't built it. I've seen, if you want to see a build of this now, uh, Jason over on Model Kit Stuff has built this and he did a beautiful job of it. Um, otherwise stick around and you'll see me do a build of it because it's a kit I've always loved when I was a kid I loved this as 170 second scale I think I built a couple of them and uh, as soon as this came out I wanted it But um, and then lovely Peter over at ASK he sent me the mass set for it so uh, there we go and in here you've got the versions for both different windscreens as well so really really nice and this is the interior set so you've got interior masks and exterior masks so we can put the interior masks on spare all the internal framework and then take it off, put the windows in, and then do all the external. You can imagine with all this glazing, it's going to look absolutely amazing. You can see how many masks are there. I would thoroughly recommend buying this for this kit, even if you just get the single-sided one, because all that glass, think of all that cutting. Oh, dear, dear, dear. So anyway, um, and these are available in the UK from Hannant's. Um, all of the ASK products are available from Hannant's as they become sort of available in the UK in stock. So uh, get on over there and you can get yourself some. Um, so the kit is number A09191, 9191, there we go, um, and let's give you some information on it here, and you can see the, the plane has probably just shot down that, um, that 109, so there we are. Um, go around the box, we've got all the warnings and everything in all the different languages, cartograph decals, yes, Airfix cartograph decals are awesome, and then we've got here, we've got the kit number, another image, and then around here we've got the upside down, I don't want Airfix to do this, so you could do that that and then that you see it's the right way up um so we've got some words about the ants in there you can freeze frame that and have a read should you want to and then we've got here we've got version one which is uh 652a n9732 um of the royal air force detling kent is that detling or detling um air aircraft shot down two bf 109es from from ij20 in the english channel on the 1st of june 1940 Coastal Command version, this is the one that Jason over at Model Kit Stuff did, it looks bloody gorgeous. Uh, Royal Australian Air Force, Queensland, October 1943. And then we've got one here with the, the high-speed sports car windscreen. You can see the difference there on the canopy on that one and that one. I would always go for that one, I think it looks better. Um, number 3 Training Command, 1941, Edward Island, Canada. So there we are. So, have a look at the box. J um, James has actually opened the box, but he's not opened any bags. Straight away we can see that we've got the darker grey plastic, so that's a good thing. We've got our clear parts there all bagged up. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Somebody actually asked if Airfix had sorted this kit out, because apparently there are spider they're spidering in some of the parts. And I can only imagine it's here, because you only really get spidering if you've got two sprue ejection put and they haven't got they haven't got two on any it's not going to be there we'll have a look in a minute so we've got one bag with two sprues in and then another bag with two sprues in and then we've got some individual oh no that's one bag with two sprues in there that's our double up sprue for the engines we've got our instructions here and our beautiful decal sheet and i could tell that james probably checked this before he um before he sent it because the decal sheet is facing downwards so we'll get our seeking out of the way over there, we can get those sprues. So let's have a look, the decal sheet is stunning as usual with cartograph, absolutely beautiful, beautiful colourings, beautiful markings, we've got some stencil in there, we've got an instrument panel, very, very nice indeed. I may, I don't know, I may get an interior set for this because this it's so visible, or I may build it out of the box, we shall see. So here we've got our 
Jess is here hanging around because I'm opening boxes. She loves it. Uh, so this is version A. So that's the typical um, REF dark green and, uh, and dark earth camouflage. Uh, silver undersides. That's interesting. That'd be interesting to look at, wouldn't it? Um, I wonder if that's like a matte silver or just a slight sheen to it. And then here we've got the Coastal Command, which is beautiful. Really, really nice. And that's 22 underneath. So it's gloss white underneath. It's, what colour is it on the sides? 34 matte white. That's interesting. <laughs> gloss white underneath, matte white on the top, on the sides. And then the normal flamp camouflage on the top. So that's cool. And then we've got one here. This, is, this, not, this one's not on the side of the box. Yes, it is. What are we talking about? Yes, it is. I didn't think it was. <laughs> Forgetful. Again, I think I'm, I'm doing down with summer. Right, so this one's got the beautiful yellow underneath. And we've got the, um, that's why it's called matte trainer yellow, because it's a trainer. And then we've got the dark earth and matte dark green on the upper sides. So, uh, very interesting scheme, that one. Very, very pretty. And I won't do that one because I don't like that windscreen. So I will probably just do that one. But um, I'm not going to go after market with decals or anything. Airfix cartograph decals, nothing wrong with them at all. So let's have a quick look at the instructions. A nice instruction book here, let's get some light on the subject. Now we've got the glare of the box gone. So we've got some information about the aircraft there. Armament, so we've got uh, 1303 machine gun in front fuselage and 1303 machine gun in dorsal turret. So and 160 kilograms of bombs. So not the uh, most armed aircraft ever to fly. So we've got a legend down here, we've got some hints and tits and some safety stuff. So typical Air, For Air Force, Airfix, very, very simplified instructions. As you can see, we've got 108 steps. And the reason for that is they have like, you know, Dragon will have like 897 pieces in one step. Airfix do one part, one part, two parts. Just an assembly there, three parts, three parts, two parts. And that's how they work. So um, that's really good. Um, so yeah, we've got this uh, this item here, whatever that may be, going together. And then we've got this uh, item here with some gauges in it going in. Uh, they're telling the painters all this 78. I believe 78 is interior green. Um, and then we've got 11, which is silver for the, for the, for the uh, foot area. And then we've got interior green. This is going to be black inside and interior green on the outside. Again, black seat. Um, check your references. I think we've have we got a book on this. I can't remember if we did a, did a book on the Anson. Uh, and then we've got another seat there. So a, a, a seat, a stool, a seat, an armchair. We've got all sorts in here going on. So uh, very, very nice indeed. All going together. We've got some decals on there. And then here we've got the main spar going in. And then you want to make sure the main spar is at 90 degrees, obviously. I would suggest, I'm not sure what the kit's like, but if it's got a lower wing. Dee, 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 dee. Yes, it has a lower center section here. Right, my suggestion would be, if, it's, if it works out, it's got the grooves in it and stuff, get that off the sprue and build that on the centre section. Just like you do with the, if you've got a 124th Typhoon, you're building up all that framework, build it in the lower wing. Don't glue it to the lower wing, just build it in the lower wing, and then when you come to fit the lower wing, you know it's all going to fit. Just, just to guarantee it's all square and everything. And then we've got the beautiful tubing, tubular framework going in here. This is all going to be visible through those windows. So make sure you get all your seams off. Get it all nicely painted up, perhaps a little bit of chipping. And check your references on colour as well, because a lot of people do these too dark. RAF interior green is, is not that dark. Um, a lot of people use XF71, which is this one, and I believe it's too dark. This is my mix of interior green. And as you can see, it's a lot lighter. If you look at the old, old Tamiya kits, there is a mix for interior green before they brought this one out. This used to be called IJN cockpit green, and now it's just called cockpit green. So uh, beware, they're actually more that color, XF76. So you have been warned. Um, I'm not warned, you've been told <laughs> uh, by me, and I'm probably bloody wrong, I always am. So we've got an operator's manual there to go on the bench, and we've got a light going on the bench. That's really nice for a little 48 scale kit. Airfix have really, really, just jumped out of a, I don't know, they've just gone leaps ahead. They're absolutely brilliant now. Uh, so we've got some control columns going in here, some control levers going in here. We've got a bottle, some sort of oxygen bottle or something there. We've got rudder pedals going in, 
for the as clever they've done that for the instrument going in below the instrument panel and then that's all going together and then that's going in and then we've got some radio gear again we've got all the decals to go on there really going to tie on this with the interior detail we've got some um we've got a machine gun going in there and whatever this is this is part of the radio gear isn't it? that's going together and that's dropping in there and then we've got all this going together this is just the sort of cat i love all the work is on the inside and the big difference is on this one you can see it so they're telling us to drill some holes if we're doing uh, version A. We're going to fit that side panel into there, which is nice. That means we're not going to just see the wing roots through the sides, which is so common these days. Um, and then we've got all this going together here. And there's lots and lots of warnings about how this should fit. That shouldn't be sticking out. It should be in. Um, that needs to be back against there. You can see we've got a step in there. It's great how they do this. It's great for the newer modelers out there. They don't mess up. Really, really cool. And then we got a, another machine gun going in there. I thought we only had one machine gun. I thought we had one machine gun up front and one in the turret. Never mind. Um, and then this is going to be the turret ring here, going in the back. We've got our um, formation lights there. I think that's what they call them, isn't it? Formation lights, ID, ID lights, whatever. And then that's all going in there. And then we've got a little glazed window going there so we'll put that in and mask it straight away so it doesn't get uh, scratched and dirty and then we're going to bring our fuselage halves together again you've got all these sort of, this is how it all goes make sure it goes together properly really really good that they show you that and then um, attack them are you watching and then um, we have the upper level going on here you've got a drilling hole in there C step 99 on page 19 and then we've got the belly going in there. And as I say, if that belly has slots in it to line up with the spars and everything, it's really worth it. If I just have a look, it's going to be here, isn't it? Yes, it does. So it's worth actually building that cockpit over that belly part. And then we've got the tail plane going on. So we've got separate movable elevators by the look of it, which is a nice touch. So that's really cool. And then we've got the... Uh, what's this going in? Oh, this is the engine bulkhead and the undercarriage bay. So that's all going to be uh, interior, well, not so necessarily interior green. You can do this cockpit green because I believe there are two different greens. Um, there's an RAF grey green and then there's an interior grey green. So if I'm wrong, tell me, but I think I'm right. Got some landing lights here going together. So we're going to paint all those nicely. And then we're going to put the uh, engine bulkhead and the, um, and the landing gear bay into the upper wing. And then into the lower wing, sorry. And then we're going to fit the upper wing on with the lower wings as well. I would suggest doing all this together so you can get everything to go together nicely. If you do that and let that dry and then that's not quite right, you might have a problem here at the wing route. So better to have a problem on the underside than the top, isn't it? Got some holes to drill there. And then we're going to add the engine cells. Okay. Just like so. Aileron's going in, looks like they're not positionable, but they're separate. With the balance weights, we're going to build up our engines here. They look very nice indeed. Uh, we've got our push rods there. We've got our engine cylinders. Um, this is where I think Jason had an issue. and I'll have to go back and watch his video because he did something with all this and it didn't work out. I must go back and look at his video. I'm sure you'll message down below and tell everybody what not to do. If you are watching this, Jason, please do, you know, sort of. Don't do steps 70 to 73 until you've done 78 or something like that. Um, I'll have to go back and watch your video and see. But nice they got all these bulges all separate, so very, very nice indeed. And this all going together, and then we're going to pop the engines on the front. I think maybe he fitted the engines before he fitted the cowls. I can't remember now. Rudder's going on. The rudder's actually positionable as well, so that's all nice. And then we've got the glazing going in the sides. So we need to make sure our interior is all nice and dust free and everything. Get these masks on the inside of the glazing, get all painted green and then take them off, glue them in. Nice one. Uh, you've got decals on the inside of the door, that's cool. And then we've got the two different types of canopies going in. Or windscreen should I say. And they're nice that they've got this, they've done this because the, the join there you can deal with the seam rather than have the seam around the glazing itself. I love it when companies do this. Tamiya, this is what Tamiya do. And it's just awesome, rather than having to sand the, the seam where it joins. And then we've got, a, um, I'm guessing that's a bomb aimer's panel there going in. There's not a lot of options, which is good. It's not too confusing. And then we've got that, um, is that a clear nose? Yeah, it's a clear nose going on. 
So no doubt we've got three clear panels and a clear sensor panel, is it? Just having a look, we've got a clear, yeah, so we've got a clear nose, clear three panels. So Airfix have sensibly, well done, it's been designed by a modeler, they've sensibly made the nose as a clear piece, so you just mask it off and paint it rather than have to put all those stupid little bits in. Uh, undercarriage here going in. Um, so these are our main wheels, obviously. We'll have a tail wheel going in somewhere. There's the tail wheel there. And we've got our main undercarriage legs. It all looks pretty sturdy and everything. So that's all good. It looks like the Anson's designed so that when the undercarriage is up, the wheel's st still exposed so they can land on the wheels. And then finally, last page, fitting the props. Got the hubs, no spinners. And then we're going to build up the turret, which is very nice. We've got three parts to the turret, three glazing parts to the turret. So that's all going to go together very nicely indeed and all look lovely and don't forget we've got all the masks for the inside of there as well so you can do all the inside of that. Check your references, it might be interior green, it might be black, um, not sure, it looks like it's painted in camouflage so it'll probably be interior green on the inside. So there we go, so that's our instructions, let's have a look at some parts. So uh, here we go James, open in your bags mate. In fact, I'm going to do the clear parts first because I want to settle this once and for all. Somebody suggested that Airfix have a problem with their clear parts in that there is some spidering on them. Um, there's certainly something going on there across the top, but it doesn't look like spidering. It looks like a crack, if anything. Um, I don't know if you can see it there. Catch it in the light. I think that'll polish out. I think it's on the surface. It looks like a stress mark. Almost like the mold. I kind of wonder if the mold has cracked. It looks like it might polish out. If not, I'll get in touch with Airfix and they'll send another sprue. Not a problem. Or if we have to, we'll just use that one, but uh, I'd rather not. Um, I will contact Airfix and see what we can do. So, uh, Otherwise, I mean, you can see all this all this stuff here. It's it's lovely. You see how nice and clear it all is. This is the main important thing with this because it's it's what the answer is all about. I mean, you can't even see the clear parts. There's the clear. So yeah, really, really nice. Very, very nice indeed. So we'll get those straight back in the bag. But as for that, yeah, I mean, it could be a common fault. I'll have a look on some other reviews and see. But um, I'm thinking that will probably polish out. We shall see. Get in the bag. I'm not leaving this out of the bag because it's lovely. Fold that over, put that over there out of the way. Right, so that was the issue there. So, clear parts, oh, not clear parts, grey parts. What have we got in here? We have this is sprue C. As you can see, there's a great big C there. Uh, so, we've got Engine covers, just a dog to know. So we've got engine uh, nacelles here, we've got interior sidewalls, that looks like part of that main spar, or sidewalls there. Very strange moulding there, I don't know what's going on there. If you can see that in the light, it's really weird, got a bit of a textured finish to it. Um, there we go. So, very nice indeed. We've got a bulkhead there. Crank handles moulded in. We've got machine guns there. Instrument panel. Yes. Very nicely done. And again, it's that grey. It's the same plastic as the Seeking. It's the same colour. So that's all good. So it's not that older blue tack stuff. And then here we have... This is frame D. So... We've got a beautiful fabric stretched effect over there, which is very nice. There's no rivet detail, obviously, because it's all fabric. And then we've got our rudder there. So this is going to be our, that's going to be the top or the bottom of the tail planes. I think it's the top. Um, and then we've got some, is that part of the turret there or part of the landing gear? I'm not sure. Um, we've got parts of the turret all here, which is the engine parts. This is the turret ring. Here's our wheels. This is the engine bearers by the look of it. 
and then we've got the um, the bits that go around the outside the engine, the engine covers. We've got some exhaust there. Very nice indeed. No doubt a lot of you have already seen this, but some of you might not have, especially those on the continent. But, uh, I can assure you guys, look it up, Avro Anson, it's such a beautiful little plane. It really is. I mean it's not gonna it's not gonna win World War III, but it's such a beautiful little plane plane to look at. Right, so here we have all our wings and everything, and again we got all this lovely fabric texture on here. Look at that, it's gorgeous. Catch it in the light, you can see all this. Really, really nice. There's the fabric belly there. More engine nacelles. We've got our ailerons there with some shrinkage in them. It almost looks like they've got rivet detail. I wonder if they had aluminium ailerons and fabric wings. A bit backward. Um, very, very nicely done. Beautiful detail. We've got raised and recessed detail. We can see all those little hatches in that lower wing. Very, very nice. Very nice indeed. And I've seen no real ejector pin mark issues either, which is nice. And then we've got this penultimate sprue here. So we've got that great big wing spar there. We've got our massive cockpit floor. These big tubular sides, which are going to look amazing. That's the tubular top. So get all that, make sure you get all those um, mould seams off, make them look like tubes. Get them primed in grey so you can really see and then you can rub the any remaining marks off and then get them painted in cockpit green, get it all looking good. A bit of wear, a bit of chipping. Yeah, that's the upper. Okay, so this is the upper tail planes. Those were bits we saw just now were the lower. So again, beautiful fabric effect on there. We've got the fabric running over our stringers here. Very, very, very nice indeed. Absolutely beautiful. So we've got a top there with no turret. I'm assuming that's going to be the trainer. Let's have a look. Nope. <laughs> So we've got a top here with no turret and there's a top with a turret so I'm guessing there's going to be another variant because all the three on here they all have turrets so that's probably not used. There we go and all the lovely rib detail inside there there's some ejector pin marks in there they're worth dealing with because it's all going to be so visible um, the ones on the top perhaps just puddle some super glue in them or something just so they sort of disappear because no one's going to sort of look up but these here well worth getting rid of especially that one but uh, no really lovely what a lovely lovely kit I've been, as I said I've been wanting this since it was released I've just never got round to buying it you know what I'm like I normally go and buy it as soon as it comes out or have it said to me by the generous company that makes it so here we've got sprue E and there's two of these as you can see we've got another one there um, so this has got our engine, this has got all the covers for the cylinders that go on the outside of these rings here. Our undercarriage doors, propellers, um, that is our um, push rods, push rod tubes there. We've got an engine firewall, there's our exhaust or intakes either one. Really lovely, lovely designing and lovely detailing as well. Very nicely done. Cylinder banks could be a bit sharper, but for what you're going to see of them, I don't think it really matters. I mean, when you look at the, the front of the box, you can see you're not going to really see much of the engine at all in there. It's not like a Beaufort or something, or a bow fighter. So there we are. Very, very nice. So that's been it. Um, I really must get my ass in gear and build this, because I've got the Blenheim, as you know, which I've had for ages. And uh, such a lovely, lovely kit. Shame about that clear apart, but I'll let you know how I get on with getting a replacement or getting, the, um, getting it polished out or whatever. But, uh, I'd be interested to know in the comments below, guys, if you've got one of these, have a look. Please. And if you've got, if more than two or three of you say you've got the same issue, there's no point in contacting Airfix. But uh, there's that line across there, across the top of that clear apart. If you've got that issue on yours, please let me know. Like I say, if it's if it's a problem from the mould, they're all going to be like it. I don't think it's a spider mark. It looks like it kind of looks like the mould had a crack in it. It almost looks like the part itself is cracked. It's weird. It's very strange. But uh, the thing is, when you look, it's like the border model Lancaster. When you look at it like this, it's kind of boom. It's in your face. When you actually see it on the model, when you start to put stuff behind it, 
Right, let me grab this box top. When you put stuff behind it, like different colours and that, you can see when you look at it like that, okay, if I hold it in the light, <clears throat> if I hold it in the light so you can see it, okay, there it is, you can see it now, right? If I bring the box up to it, put some different colours and that behind it, you can see it's not so prominent. What is What you are seeing is a reflection of the light because unlike spidering like the border model Lancaster has, this has got, it's got like a raised surface. That's why I'm saying I think it could be polished out. Let me know if you've got the same problem with yours, please, guys. And uh, I will see if I could come up with a cure for it. But I'm sure that will polish out. Right then, thank you for watching. That's been a review of the Airfix 148 scale Avro Atson Mark 1. Jess is now inside the box. Um, keep your eyes peeled for a build. I will be building this. And oh, something I did want to say. <clears throat> a lot of people have been saying they're not getting notifications. Wendy has been in touch and she's discovered something. If you go to the top left hand corner of your screen up there, right at the top in the address bar where it says youtube.com, next to that there is a padlock. Click on that padlock and a window will come down and I think it's the third one down it says notifications and mine was actually off. And apparently it defaults to off. So just click on, just click on the, the, the blue bar on the right and it'll move to the right and you'll, then you'll get notifications. I wasn't aware of it. Wendy found it. Thank you very much, Wendy. I've told the world and I'll mention it again in another video as well. Bye for now, guys. Thank you for watching.